it's time to taste the Dunkelweizen. <laughs> I would say it carbonated. So it's been, uh, let's see, this was put in at 224.20. So it's been a while. We let, we had them sitting out for, you know, whatever, weeks. And we just put this in the fridge, I guess, like yesterday or the day before. Now, time for the pour. You all get to analyze my pouring capability here. I'm not a beer pourer. A little bit in the bottom. I'll worry about that later. Right off the bat, it does have a nice head. Everybody likes a nice head. There's supposed to be some talk of head retention. I don't... I know that means that it lasts for a while. It's lasting for a while, so I'm guessing People say, that's... like, can you float a quarter on okay. or a bottle cap on it? Not a quarter, a bottle cap. I would bet I could float a bottle cap on that. That's pretty strong. Um, the bubbles all seem to be pretty uniform. That's another thing. There's some bigger ones in the middle, but along the outside, you can totally see that they're uniform. Um, color, it's dark, but I wouldn't call it, like, the true darks that I like, but it's close. Smell. It's, it smells pleasant. It smells roasty, malty. Um, it smells like a lighter beer than I'm used to. So, and I know everybody's looking at that going, that's a light beer? To me, yes. I drink dark beers. Um, I'm just going to give it a taste. We are not... Beer snobs. Beer snobs. <laughs> by any no stretch, stretch of the of imagination. imagination. And we have been doing lots of brew videos today and been tasting some really odd... Oh, yeah. We've tasted some strange stuff. ...in various stage of completion <laughs> brews. So our palates may be a little... We cleansed palates before we did this, but it um, it's a good beer. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with this. Don't let my odd not say anything fool you. This is a good beer. I will drink this. We have like 40, 50 bottles of this. I will totally drink this. Oh, yeah. It's not, it doesn't stay with you. It's not overly rich. It's not heavy, which is a good thing. It's It's got a nice flavor to it, strong, good body to it, but it doesn't have a lot of finish. It doesn't stay. It's crisp and refreshing. Goes down and it's gone, yeah. which that's a good thing. Beers are supposed to be like that. I tend to like the really dark stuff, like I keep saying, which does stay with you a while, but um, this is nice. On second sip, it is a little richer than I thought it was. A little thicker, more mouthfeel to it. I'm getting the malty notes. Yeah, definitely malty. It's It's got some hops component, but it's not overly hoppy. It's not overly bitter. It balances that sweet and hoppiness just really, really nicely. As a kit beer goes, you can't go wrong with this. Yeah. If you like medium-bodied beers and, and that kind of thing, this is a great kit. I think ours came out at like 5%. Uh... It wasn't expensive. It was like 30 35 bucks. And if you have the equipment already, you can make this for literally 30 to 35 bucks to get 45 bottles of beer. That's that's a pretty good deal where I come from. I mean, that makes a six pack under six bucks. Sure, can you buy beer for under six bucks a six pack? Yeah, but are you really going to want to drink it? Where's this? I actually want to drink this. Um, I might not reach for this all the time. But uh, I like it. I, it it's definitely... Uh, I think it would pair nice with German and Polish food. Not to be stereotypical, but I drink that. A burger. It, I'm thinking sausage or... Yeah. Yeah, with uh, like a richer fatty food like yeah. that, this yeah. would go nicely. Foods that have butter in them, actually, I think this would go really nice. Something about beer and butter. Um, like buttered noodles, like alushki yeah. or... Yeah, it's the, it's the bread thing. Yeah. Even pierogies. Yeah, this will go good with pierogies. But uh, this is a good beer. So my final verdict on the kit, even though I gave them such a hard time on the instructions. <laughs> you did. You did. I hate instructions, and I hate <laughs> instructions that are done poorly. I do feel that the instructions, while they were playing it safe, might have not been completely perfect. That said, they did do that to play it safe for people that don't know what they're doing so that it's harder to screw up. All the things that they had us do did make it harder to screw up. The only one that didn't make it harder to screw up that actually gave us a chance of failure is the secondary. Putting that into secondary. Yeah. 
I don't really think that's a smart thing to do. I would have racked it and bottled it right away. I would have primed it and bottled it. The longer you let that sit in secondary like that, the more risk you have an infection. This is a low ABV drink, which means there's not a lot of protection in this. And that's why IPAs and things like that were invented to make them pre more preservatives, to preserve them and let them travel longer to India from England and places like that. That's why they're called Indian Pale Ales. Yeah. Um, but this, I'm going to give this on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to call this like a 7 to an 8. It's that good. I really like this. I put this a step below like the Guinness Draft. It doesn't taste like Guinness Draft. Don't get me wrong. But as far as quality of a beer, I would buy it if it came in bottles. Let's put it that way. That, that's an easy way to say it. I would buy this on occasion. I don't think it's my favorite, but I would say, yeah, let's get some of that. Some, yeah, I would do that. Um, so that's why I give it like a 7 or so. Derek is not as big of a beer drinker or appreciator as I might be. And I'm not even the biggest beer appreciator out there. But to me, this is nice. This is a good beer. And like I said, if you've never made a beer before as a kit, go for it. Um, we're going to have links to that kit in the description below. So if you want to give this a try, you can. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.